Hey, my name is Joe and this is my Craps Master Dice Shooting Journey. Welcome to step number one of my 10 step process. This is where I create a benchmark for my dice shooting journey. I'm gonna encourage you guys to follow along and do the same as what I am each week in each video that I put out. And please, please, please leave some comments below this video with your dice results and, and how you're doing it and suggestions that you can make for future improvements. On the side, you're gonna see me actually doing my throw. So I recorded it and then I made it super speed. So that way it's gonna go really super fast. But anyhow, my good friend George from CY, he suggests that a benchmark of 216 rolls should be performed when you're trying to figure out where you're starting at. And that video on the side there is gonna show all 216 of my throws. The reason I'm doing this is because one of my goals is to show transparency. So in other words, I wanna show you exactly the process that I found and I'm gonna show you everything that I'm doing. And I'm gonna encourage you to do the same thing. By the way, it took me about two hours and 17 minutes to complete all of those 216 throws. But while throwing, I did a couple different things. First, I recorded each throw onto a piece of paper and I made sure to record the left die and the right die separate. For my left dice, I used the red dice and for the right dice, I use the blue one. That's kind of opposite of what most people do. I also made a few notes about what I can do to improve my throws and things I can do to focus on while I'm shooting in future sessions. So these are things that I think are gonna help improve my results and I'm gonna cover those in future videos as we go forward. Once I was done throwing or once I finished throwing, I took a break for a few days. It's kind of tiring doing 216 rolls all at one time, but more importantly, I have different life things to do with so things to do in my private life and that took priority over my dice shooting journey. But once I had a chance, I went in and I downloaded the Bone Tracker dice recording program. This is a free Microsoft Excel program that's put up by Axis Powercraft. So Heavy at Axis Powercraft is one that promotes this. If you haven't checked out his site, make sure that you do so. I will leave a link in the description of this video. Uh, make sure you check it out. But let me walk you through what I did and how I did things. So first of all, I did a Google search for bone tracker download and you'll see that on the screen right now. Then I clicked on the top link. It says download bone tracker access power craps and that brought me to this page. And then what you wanna do is I'm gonna highlight right here where I clicked on to download the program. Remember, you're gonna need Microsoft Excel or a program that reads Microsoft Excel files to use the program. I guess according to Access Powercraft, there's programs out there that are very inexpensive if you don't have Microsoft or some are actually free. Free. So kind of look around. I know on his site he has a suggested program that if you don't have Microsoft that you can actually download that program. I think it's free. But once I downloaded the program, I deleted the samples that they had in the program and then I entered my dice rolls results. So if you look on the left side, I clicked where it says click here to enter rolls and that opens up the box that I show here and this is where I recorded all of my rolls. So I entered all the 216 results into the program right here. And this screen here shows the results now. So let's go through and explain how I did. So how did these 216 rolls end up? And if you look at the results on the, on the screen right now, it shows that 91 of my throws were on axis. That means that both of the dice were thrown, hit the back wall, bounced back, and they stayed on one of the primary numbers that are on top. So they stayed on axis. And I'll go through, break it down a little bit what that means. 44 of them had one dice off axis. That means that one of them either flipped out, exploded, or flipped in, imploded. And then 29 of the rolls, both of them were off axis. So both of them hit the back wall, rolled off and went off to the sides. In other words, they didn't stay on, on axis. Kind of like John from Procraps talks about, when they hit the back wall, it's a major accident, a major explosion that happened. So anyhow, uh, 29 of those were both off axis. Regarding the on axis throws, so remember I said 91 of them were on axis. Of those 91, 18 of them, or 8.29%, landed both on a primary number. So that means that both of my dice on the top showed either a four, five, two, or three at the same time. So that means they were both on axis. 
44 of my throws showed a single pitch, and that means that both dice stayed on axis, so I had one of those other numbers on there, but one dice rolled one face further. And we'll cover more of that in a, in a later video, what I mean by single pitches, and the next one's a double pitch, pitch, but we'll cover more in detail what that is, and I'll actually show you what it looks like when it's in a single pitch. And then finally, 29 or 13.36 of my primary throws were on access, but it showed a double pitch. And that means that one of the dice rolled two faces further than what the other one did. This is kind of uh, misleading, but my SRR, or the seven to rolls ratio, is 5.43. The expected should be six, and everybody's goal is to get more than six, because if you get more than six, that means you're beating the average of throwing in craps. In other words, I rolled a seven on average every 5.43 rolls. Now, this is deceiving because, like I said, I rolled 40 sevens, but 12 of those 40 came on a come out. So that means if you were pointing the pass line when I rolled that seven, you would have won, you would have gotten paid. This is where the SRR is very misleading. So if you take those those 12 out, it probably been a, would have been an SRR of like around eight or nine, which is well above the average. I also rolled 6.7 outs. So that means that on six different occasions, I rolled, made a point, and then immediately after the next number was a seven. So that's probably the worst case scenario. And then finally, on 13 different occasions, I rolled the point. So that means that let's say the six was rolled as a come out and I went a couple rolls and then I rolled that six again. So I made that point on 13 different occasions. If you look at the screen right now, um, I'll show you what my handwritten results are, my ro handwritten roll results. And if you look closely, I have different shapes around certain numbers. If there's a triangle around the number, that means that that was a seven out. So I had whatever number on a rolls and then the seven rolled. So that was the end of that shooter sequence. If there's a circle around the number, that means that it's a come out throw. So if you look at it, there might be a couple of them that have circles around several numbers in a row because that means that I still have not created that point. And that's where the, the come out sevens are, are listed also if you look close at the at these lists but next to the circle the final number with the circle on it i'll have another number and this is a p with a number inside of it so let's say it says p5 that means that the point is now the five and that's going to follow through until either a i throw at a point which is uh, designated on my charts by a square around the number so that means that i hit that point and then we're going back to the come out again or if there's a triangle that would be eventually that's where the seven out occurs so this is step one of the craps master dice shooting journey please comment your journey and your results also, like, share, and sub this video, please. Hey, my name is Joan. This is my Craps Master Journey. Let's make it yours, too.